So welcome, yes, as she said, my name is Kathleen. Um, and um, as she said, I'm responsible for the 3IT at the Fraunhofer Heinrich Hertz Institute. Who knows about Fraunhofer? What do you know? MP3? I show you a bit of what we're working on before I go into the details, so just the overview. 69 institutes, 24,500 people working with us or for us, and it's mainly scientists. And you will meet some out there. There is another Fraunhofer Institute who's exhibiting, and I have a couple of colleagues in the room here from Cologne, I'm, I think. So, um, and what you know is, yes, it's MP3, but it's also H264, and that's what you should know, and um, H265, which is also known as HEVC. So those video standards or video coding standards, that's what we are famous for, and that's basically those video standards that's done in our institute in Berlin, the Fraunhofer Heinrich Herz Institute. So much about that, and as you see, there are a couple of research institutes in, in Germany and around the world, and we have a really high ranking here uh, when it comes to um, our uh, research um, experience and um, um, Researchers. So, and I really like to bring up this guy, not because we really miss him. I guess a couple of you love to see this face. So, Obama also uh, used the Fraunhofer model to open the photonic manufacturing hub. This is based on the Fraunhofer model. So, you see, um, there are a couple of people who like this. And as it is the biggest European research association dedicated to applied research. Fraunhofer HHI in Berlin is one of them, and we are turning 90 next year, so we are really proud um, about this, um, that we are a long time in this industry, and that's just a couple of things you might want to know. So when I'm saying, uh, here it says 140 students, that means they are working students, so students is a really, well, it's, that's a big, big thing that we need in our institute, because they are basically the future, and we need to work with the future and for the future. So, what is this all about 3D, virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality? I said it's all with a plus because that's what basically Michael said yesterday from Microsoft. Yes, it's all together, and there are some different um, definitions. Well, what I want to point out, the 3IT used to be the 3D Innovation Center. Um, and then we widened the scope, we and our partners. So there was this big boom of our time in 2009, and that was the first digital 3D movie. And then, obviously, the CE industry, so all the um, TV manufacturers, they came out with this technology, the 3D um, glasses, um, the, the stereo TVs. But what would you see on that? Avatar, wow. That's why I would buy such a TV. Well, um, it took a while, and there have been a lot of bad 3D movies out there, and that didn't help the industry. Um, and that is one of the issues we faced in, in our, well, scientific world. And now, what are we facing now? Virtual reality. So we have the new hype. 3D had the hype, and there was something in the 30s, 50s, 80s. And virtual reality, that's also not new. Um, we don't have to go into details here, but I just love those pictures. It's definitely not new, and we have seen those things. Um, I love this, um, <laughs> the name iPhone. It's a, that's really funny. So you have seen this in the 80s. So, and then also, not only virtual reality glasses, but 360 video, we have seen that earlier. So, I'm not quite sure if this is the really big thing where we have to start all over again. We can use what we already worked in and what we researched in, in the 3D world. So we should not forget what we ha had there and what we researched in, in the, I think, almost 30 years or something. And we can use all those technologies for virtual and augmented reality. And I will sh uh, show you a couple of things, a, a couple of technologies we're working on and results, and then we go into the case studies. So, um, this is one of our camera systems, and that's the newest generation you see here on the big picture, uh, where we um, close the ceiling. So, that is a spherical um, 360 camera, and that is a 10K by 2.5K resolution. So, you have 10 micro HD cameras here, and this one is now 
almost affordable. So in comparison to all the other cameras out there um, who are on this really high level, which are on this high level, this is the new Omnicam um, that we are at the moment getting into rental. So at least we are um, negotiating here. So, but that's for this camera. Um, there are a couple of other technologies we have been working on the last years, and that's mostly coming from some other projects. We have been working on European-funded projects or uh, German government-funded, the uh, Ministry for Economics and, um, and Energy or the Ministry for um, um, Research and Scientific. Um, and here is also another um, example, um, facial animations by dynamic texture. You can or cannot imagine how we can integrate that in virtual reality, but you'll see, and that's one of my favorites, um, we can manipulate, and I mean, like we all know Hollywood and that this is not the real world, and with those images and those um, um, results, you'll see what Hollywood is really about. I wish you could do that the other way around, It'd make me younger. I think we would work on that next. So that's examples. And by manipulating, I'm not only talking about those wrinkles, I'm also talking about facial expressions. So on the left side, that should be a video. Um, but on the left, that is the real image. And then we manipulated his mimic, um, which is quite nice and funny. Um, we. We developed a virtual mirror in 2009, I think, or 2008, for Adidas. And that was basically showing you in a, in, on a screen a shoe that you're not wearing. It was for mass customizing. Or, yeah. Um, and nowadays, um, this same technology we can bring in, in those augmented reality worlds, and we can map this on moving and textures or here on the skin. And that's what you also can see in a lot of productions in the entertainment industry. But this is all details. Well, how about we bring the whole 3D model of humans into a virtual world? How if, what if we can manipulate that? What if we can bring this into um, <coughs> any CGI world? Excuse me. <coughs> um, so here's a setup of our virtual of our volumetric video studio. And that's what I showed last year briefly, um, the results there. But here we have some new results. Um, this is just from two stereo pairs. That is my colleague Thomas. We can go back. And that's the result that just comes out of those cameras with our algorithm. So no cleaning up here. We had a, pre um, a production early this year with our colleagues Ufa Lab. And here you see the setup in our green screen studio, where we use 12 cameras to get a 200 degree image of those actors. And here you see a result that was, we showed that at NAB this year. And that um, basically, we are the ones behind the technology, but UFA Labs bring, they are bringing in the creative tools here. And here you see, we call it mixed reality. We're bringing in those um, actors in a CGI world. And here's another um, take from exactly that. It's called Gateway to Infinity. And I think I saw my colleagues there, Ufa Labs, maybe you raise your hands, then people can later on talk to you about this project. <laughs> and after that, we did a project with Trotskin and um, it's basically the same technology, it's the same algorithm. What I want you to see is, like, focus on the hands. Um, she is rolling this apple. And when you know competitors in this environment, you know that seeing fingers or like um, wow. her, her feet, that they are really not well touched to the ground. This is a really complicated, um, well, a complicated approach here. And, and uh, this, when you talk with everybody else who's working in this industry, everybody's convinced that this is a really high level um, solution when it comes to volumetric video or six degrees of freedom. Um, oh, sorry, hang on. Let's, let's do that once more. And Alicia, I trust you help me to stick to the time. So see your hands. 
And basically when you are in this environment and I invite you to come to our office, um, you want to look at those, uh, at the fingers and that you can really see through that. And the texture of her body and her costume and so forth. And you can go really closely. That is the difference to what we know from Microsoft HoloLens. You can't really go close to the object here. Uh, in this case, you can. So this is about the technology behind it. And I want to focus a bit more on the um, projects we're doing. And there's just one since last week. <laughs> it's through. So that is a EBB Investitionsbank Berlin Brandenburg. The investment bank Berlin Brandenburg um, is funding this project. And that's what we're doing with uh, small companies. Um, it's real life film. Zunke Kirchhoff is here. He's doing a workshop on uh, 3D uh, on virt virtual reality productions. And we also have Trotzkind here who helped us with this Tiger um, Girl, the production we just saw. And that's basically using this approach, what we um, have done and what, what we established with UFA first, and then um, we bring this into this um, project. And it's really going to this step where we have not only 200 degrees of those objects of the human bodies, but 360. And that's a picture of our studio from Monday. So at the moment, we're setting up the 360 degree studio, and you see there are some camera pairs there. So uh, in the one, maybe you remember that this one slide set, we had 12 cameras for the UFA production. Here we would use up to 48 um, cameras, so 24 stereo pairs. Um, and we're using this light approach here, and this is just not done yet because we're waiting for the delivery to come in, all the lights and all the cameras. So the goal is to finish that in the summer. So let's see how long the summer is. Um, another project, and um, this is not dedicated to entertainment, uh, it's to something else. Could you imagine what they all have in common? I couldn't imagine that I put a slide with you, Hefner, and Albert Einstein together. There's Philip Kedek, by the way, and he should be important for, to you. By the way, he has the same birthday that I have. But anyways, what they have in common? Stroke. They all have been suffering from a stroke. Um, and in a therape ther therapeutic way, therapeutic, you know what I mean, um, <laughs> approach, um, it is really important and it is really helpful to get a, much more into the immersive world because you're triggering the brain, you're stimulating the brain much better than with a classical approach. Um, so what, the, what we're talking about is patients who suffer from uh, things like strokes, uh, dem dementia, or um, similarities. And what they need is a really meaningful diagnostic, and it should be adaptive, and it should be useful, or it could be used in an individ individual therapy. Sorry. So... Here is a classical training approach. That's what they all do in the last decades. So what we want to do with virtual reality, we use the 360 content, and we put this in on the head-mounted display, and we obviously measure the head movements, and then we bring people in the immersive world. And I mean, that is, I'm sure that's not surprising for you. That is just obvious use of virtual reality. Um, but what we have here, the results, and when you compare this to classical approaches, the, our project that we call v Reha, uh, especially the, um, the link to diagnostics and trainings, and um, that we can bring this in the, in the individual therapies, I think that is quite a huge step. And we can tailor that, we can tailor it to the patient, um, and what you saw beforehand, like all those technologies we're working on, um, it is about the visualization of um, the patient. And we talked about that yesterday in another um, um, talk um, where we had markerless body um, uh, reconstructions. Um, we want to have as, well, as detailed as possible, we want to see our arms and our legs to get the full immersion. 
And that's why we can bring our technology into that. And obviously, that is helping in the digital world. It is helping a lot to um, work remotely at home and to get um, monitoring from, let's say, from the other part of the world where there is a specialist, especially for your um, disease or whatever you have. And, he, and in this digital world, that's just obvious that they can work together, although they are so far apart from each other. So this project uh, that just details w which companies and uh, institutes are working in that, and you see we just start next month, so it's just through. Um, and that's the Max Planck Institute, um, Charity, and the University Leipzig, obviously us. And there is one um, small, medium-sized company, Hasomit, who are working in this. So if you want to know more details, I'm, I'm happy to tell you more about that. Um, I'm staying here. So one more example. Um, and that's dedicated much more to the industrial revolution. So going from medical field to um, architecture, to big buildings, to building life cycles. Who knows this picture? Okay, that is King's Cross. That is in London. And the company Zela builded, is building those structures and they're building the biggest glass buildings in the world. Um, I think they also have been uh, responsible for the new Apple headquarter, where you see 16 meters of glass. So when you work in such an environment, collaboration, especially in this digital world again, collaboration is key to success. And what we want to do with this project is to develop standards, standards um, for all the different um, applications, softwares, they all work together. Um, if someone is a house owner here, do you know what it is to build just a small house? Just imagine how complicated it is to build such huge buildings and how many companies are working on that. And we're not only talking about uh, CAT pictures, uh, CID. We're talking for, about so many other um, software that they all have to combine and, that, and they have to communicate with each other. So it's really important to bring standards in this world. And here you see an example. We want to integrate our technologies in augmented reality um, helmets. And as I said, it's the, we're trying to bring standards into the planning, manufacturing, assembling, operations, and dismantling. So it's all um, combined and it's all um, related, because obviously they're using the same software for those things. Um, and here's the, um, the very brief details, because that's even one month later, we're starting with that in September. Uh, obviously, that's us and um, a couple of small, medium-sized companies and card size. But um, you saw the first picture. Also, Zela is one of the partners, third-party partners we're working here together. So, and then I have one more example in this use case, and that's coming from our partner side in the 3IT, the Innovation Center for Immersive Imaging Technologies. Um, and that's how it looks like, by the way, in our um, exhibition area. And now we even have more there. But that used to be also the green screen studios there. But just to remind you, that's what I showed you earlier. That's what it looks like now. So one of the partners there is Ipsos Research. So when it comes to market research, virtual reality is also something they look into. And I have been at Ipsos a couple of weeks ago in Hamburg, and the setup was really interesting. What are they doing? Have you heard, who have heard of car clinics? Hands up. Okay, <laughs> five or six car clinics. It's a really big um, topic in the market research. What they're doing, or what automotive in industry is doing, they test prototypes with consumers, like, for instance, um, you want to bring a new model to China, and you want to know if they would buy that, if the Chinese consumer would buy that. How do you know? You have to ask the Chinese consumer. And how do you do that? Well, either you bring the prototype to China, or you fly in the Chinese consumers. You can imagine that is extremely costly. That is millions, I'm telling you it's millions. So. What they are um, looking into in virtual world is how about we can replace this to a certain level with virtual car clinics. So here the setup is 
they had the studios in Studios Hamburg, and they split in, in the middle with some uh, walls. And one part was the virtual experience. They had HTC Vive boxes there. Um, you see it here, one of the cabins. And on the other side, they had the real cars. So they had three car models there. And they tested that with this, um, well, with this group of consumers. Um, and here are some details. Um, it is everything, you, like the, the whole range of age. It doesn't matter if they are tech, uh, if, any, if, if this is high or, or low. It's, it's just a variety of a normal consumer. And what they figured is that is the, the results are similar, are similar to what they have seen in the real car clinic. Um, so it, the virtual experience, it gives a high level of immersion. And here you see some uh, quotes. I was in the different world, just me and the cars. Uh, so you see there is some immersion. Um, and it, where there was also no problem when it comes to motion sickness, but that's what they also added. It was just a, status, uh, a static image, so that was just there was not there was no moving um, images. It was just photogrammetry. But still, because those um, customers they have been in this environment for almost two hours, uh, it's obviously something you have to uh, take in. Um, have to have to. Um, See, um, so the real versus virtual stimuli, you see here there's almost no difference when they're saying, do you like the car? What details do you like about the car? Um, and I just like to show you at the end a, a bit of the insights. And there was almost no difference when they talked about the front, the back, whatever, all the details. Um, but the virtual, uh, car model, obviously, it was a bit like when it was further away, um, they couldn't see the details. Obviously, that is, of course, I mean, HTC Vive is already really good, but the resolution is not high enough. Um, but they also said, funny enough, um, if, if they have been much more um, familiar with the model, so here you see the Volkswagen Golf. Um, it's much more that people have been much more um, familiar with this model than with the Hyundai. And if, when it was much more f uh, familiar, um, the evaluation was almost the same, virtual next to uh, real. Um, and here you see again, there's almost no difference in uh, the evalu evaluation. So to sum up. Um, Overall, evaluation of shapes and form was pretty nice. Um, what they also said is we need higher resolution to bring this in the real car clinic and to really like, um, adjust to that. And here are some key findings. So what my colleagues at Ipsos said is basically, yes, we can replace that with a real, VR, uh, with a real car clinic, but only for early stages and only like when we're talking about early stage of designing. Because um, at the end, people still want to wanna see details and um, want to relate more. Um, <coughs> sorry. So I want to just say thank you to Nick. Nick at uh, Nick Reynolds as Ipsos provided me with that. And I want to just say, point out that Daniel from uh, Ufa Labs is here and a couple of other colleagues from the VRBB. They provided me with that slide. So if you want to talk about the VR Berlin Brandenburg um, Association, I'm happy, we are happy to be here and talk with you. And next week, we are opening our facilities at the 3IT. So um, you're welcome to join us there. And you see there is this new picture that is a 3D printer. Uh, sorry, a 3D scanner. And we have a 3D printer with that. Um, this is um, part of the Fraunhofer IGD, IGD um, who are working in the cold lab. And this is really important also when we talk about virtual worlds that we can scan objects um, as precise as possible. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm staying here for the whole day and I'm happy to talk um, with you about virtual, augmented, mixed reality, whatever, and that's 
couple of pictures. Of one from yesterday, and I really like the one, I call that the VR bokeh. So when you have a lot of VR glasses on exhibitions, you, you want to make sure that it's not that sweaty. So, thank you.